All right, welcome to lesson five of basic CNC programming for the CNC mill. Uh, in this lesson, we'll be talking about the difference between climb cutting and conventional cutting. In previous examples, I've always walked the end mill around the part in a clockwise motion, and I told you that there was a particular reason for that, and we'll be discussing that in this lesson. So, uh, as you see, we walked around this part clockwise, and that would be considered climb milling versus uh, this illustration here where the where the end mill walks around in a counterclockwise motion. The machine can be programmed to do either, and it will do exactly as you tell it to. Uh, the only difference will be is the amount of power it takes to drive your end mill around the part, and also the finish that it leaves on the part, which on climb milling, there will be less power necessary to uh, walk that end mill around the part, and also the finish will be better and that is because during conventional cutting which is the counterclockwise motion the chips are being pulled back through the cut and recut by the end mill therefore leaving an ugly finish so let me give you an illustration of what it looks like when we are climb cutting or conventional cutting all right, so here we have a four flute end mill. You can usually look at the tip and see how many flutes are ground into the end mill. And you can also see this is uh, considered a right hand end mill because the twist that's been ground into the flutes goes from left to right. So this is a, uh, a very common end mill that you'll be using most of the time. Uh, now they may be different in length and diameter or made out of high speed or carbide depending on what type of material you're cutting. But um, what I'd like you to remember in, uh, in this little illustration is uh, the difference between climb cutting and conventional cutting. Now it takes a clockwise rotation for this tool to actually get any, uh, to do any cutting. Uh, if you were to to turn it counterclockwise, it would actually rub, and if it was trying to do the cutter pad, it would probably b break trying. Um, so make sure that you got always uh, program it uh, for the correct rotation. Okay. So um, now, now what I would like you to remember is uh, the difference between climb cutting and conventional cutting. So let's first talk about climb cutting. Now, remember this goes into a clockwise direction, and what I'd like you to do is hold that end mill up against your arm, go, uh, turn that end mill in a clockwise direction, and, and feel how it just wants to climb up your arm without any effort. It just rolls along without any problems. So that is what we consider climb cutting. Now, if you did the opposite, if you still you know, rotated it the clockwise direction, but now you went the other direction, you you know, and you hold it up against your skin, it just wants to dig in, and it's just not smooth, and uh, there's a lot of resistance, and so that is what we would call conventional cutting. So uh, I hope that that illustration might, uh, might stick in your head as you're picking your uh, tool path around your part and uh, determining the, the direction you want to direct that path, uh, hopefully the climb cutting is what you remember from this illustration. So you can see uh, it goes from left to right uh, with the cutter on the outside. So let's talk about another way that you uh, can remember uh, how to pick a cutter path around a part in the next illustration. All right, so we're talking about how to correctly pick our color path so that we are always climb milling as we're walking the end mill around the part. So another way to remember is to pretend that this end mill as it walks around the outside of this part is actually you driving in a car around the city block. Uh, pretend that you're looking at it way from above and Notice how you are always on the left side of the sidewalk as you're driving around the block. Let's do that one more time. Okay, so what does that mean? We're on the outside of a part 
we are driving on the left side of the sidewalk and that will produce climb milling cutter paths okay so now we've talked about walking end mills around square so let's talk about uh, walking an end mill around a circle on the outside now notice we're still going in a clockwise motion around the outside of the circle Again, if you pretend that this is a car, we're still driving on the left side of the sidewalk as we're going around the block. Okay, so that again will produce climb milling action. Now, driving on the inside of this circle is still climb milling, but notice we're going in a counterclockwise direction. But if you pretend that that's you driving in a car you're still on the left side of the sidewalk as you're driving around this circle okay so hopefully that will help you uh, pick your color path so rule of thumb if you're on the outside of a part or outside of a feature most likely it will be a clockwise motion and if you're on the inside of a part or a feature then you will be going counterclockwise but to produce climb milling action hope that helps all right so here's a 3d representation of our small program as we're walking our end mill on the outside of this part and climb milling all the features that we are milling uh, the outside features of course in a clockwise motion and then the inside feature in a counterclockwise motion so let's take a look and see what kind of code that produces all right so let's take a quick look at our cutter paths and the code uh, that produces climb milling as we mill around the outside and inside of features so our cutter path looks good uh, so let's take a look at the code to mill the square uh, we, uh, we used G1 linear code of course those are the straight lines as it walks on the outside of the part in a clockwise direction then milling the outside of the circle took a couple of G1 uh, moves just to get to the start point of the circle but then a clockwise arc by the G2 code and then we jump on the inside of the circle make a couple of straight line moves to get to the start point of the circle and then do a G3 counterclockwise to get the end mill to climb mill that feature so hope this helps uh, remember how to pick geometry so that we're always climb milling because that is the preferred way uh, of milling on a CNC mill. Alright, well thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.